Welcome back. So we have been studying how to count or we have been dealing with the subject of combinatorics. So combinatorics is the subject of our branch of mathematics that involves in counting. And a typical question in this regard is given a set S, what is the size of the set or what is the cardinality of S or how many elements are there in S. Now the question to be asked is how is the set given? In most of the cases the set is given implicitly by describing the set and not explicitly and that's what makes the problem hard. So the set is usually described in words and you have to count the number of elements in this set. So for example, um, one can ask how many elements of a universe set satisfy a certain set of conditions? Or equivalently we can ask things like how many ways can you draw an element from the universe such that the element satisfies certain set of conditions? So these are both counting problems and these are equivalent questions and these are the kind of questions that we would like to answer in the um, subject of combinatorics. So here are some examples that we discussed last class but let me repeat it all over again. So how many n digit numbers are there where there are no consecutive digits are sent? Similarly, the next question is, how many functions are there from the set 1 to n to 1 to k that are non-decreasing? That means if x is less than y, then f of x is less than or equal to f of y. Or how many ways can you distribute n identical toffees among k kids? And the last one is, how many strings of length n, how many 0 on strings of length n are there which con doesn't con have any consecutive 0. So these are some of the problems that we should keep in our mind and we have been looking at some of the general theories of attacking counting problems. Now while we can do a lot of theories about counting problems, one thing to remember always is that each problem is unique and each has to be solved applying a technique that fits it. So different problems require different techniques and that you have to solve, that you have to find out yourself. Counting is in fact one of the most challenging subjects in mathematics. In fact, big names like Sinibas and Amanujan spend a lot of his time solving problems in counting. There are some handy tricks and tools to attack these problems and that's what we have been looking at in this set of lectures. In the last video, we looked at the problem of how many ways can we select k objects from n objects. And there have been four, there are four cases that we have to look at. Question is that, or the two cases that we have to look at. Case 1, are we allowed to pick objects multiple times, meaning is repetition allowed? And the second one is, inside the selected set of objects, does ordering matter or does it not matter? Is it just a group or is it a kind of an ordered set? And depending on that, we have got we have got this four different counts. So in this video, we will start looking at a kind of similar problem, but slightly different. It's called the distribution problem, or in other words, how many ways can you distribute n balls in k bins, in k baskets?
So you have say n balls and you have to distribute it in k busters. Now just like last time, here there are few questions to be asked. First question, are the bins distinguishable or are they indistinguishable? Or in other words, is it like that, okay, I have the basket 1, basket 2, basket 3, basket 4, or are we just asking them to club some of the balls into groups? And I don't care which is group 1, which is group 2. Similarly, are the balls distinguishable or indistinguishable? Meaning, are all the balls the same, identical? So it doesn't matter whether I put the first ball in the first basket or the second ball in the first basket. As long as one of the balls goes in the first basket, it's the same. And in case the balls are distinguishable, then inside a particular bin, does the order matter or not? So inside a bin, do we care about how the balls have been placed? Or which ball has gone there first and which ball has gone there second and so on? Or it doesn't matter, it's just another group of balls. Next question is that, are we allowed to keep some of the bins empty? Are we allowed to keep some of the baskets? empty, just ignore some of the buskets. And are there any other restrictions basically? So we will be looking at this problem um, and this is in fact a very general class of problems, how to distribute n balls into k bins. Uh, we call it as the balls and bins problem. And we will be going through various cases and see how to attack each of the cases. Some of them will be easy, some of them are notoriously hard. Okay, so, so let's start with the first problem that we have. So this is the same kind of problem that uh, we were doing in the last video. So here we have n constable in your police station and you have to divide the n constable into four projects project 1, project 2, project 3, project 4 no constable can be in part of more than one project and every constable should be part of some project how many ways can you form the groups now this is basically a balls and green problem so you have say project 1, project 2, project 3 and project 4. Now and you have the constables C1 to Cn. Now this constable you can put, you have to divide them into these baskets basically. Right? And I don't care at this point about what are the ordering of the things in the project 1 or of the constables that goes in project 1 and so on. So I just have to divide into groups. How many ways can I do it? So the idea is that the constable number 1 can be either be put into project 1 or project 2 or project 3 or project 4. So there are 4 possibilities for constable 1. Similarly, constable 2 can be put into project 1 or project 2 or project 3 or project 4. So there are 4 possibilities for constable 2 also. And similarly for every of the constables there are 4 possibilities. And that means the total number of possibilities that are there is 4 times 4 n times which is 4 power n. So the number of ways of placing this or dividing this n constable into 4 projects is 4 power n. Speaking of a general problem, if you have n distinguishable balls, now distinguishable balls, what do I mean by distinguishable balls? I mean the balls are different, like in the constable. Constable 1 is different from constable 2. Right? 
and you have k labeled beans meaning project 1 project 2 project 3 project 4 constable 1 going to project 1 is different from constable 1 going to project 2 right and i don't care about the ordering inside the beans so in that case the total number of ways of placing n balls into k beans by the same argument the first ball can go to any of the k beans second ball can go any of the k beans third ball can go to any of the k beans so all total it is k power n now a couple of things to note here it is very much possible that if say i have this four buckets and i have this n constables and i put i might also put all of the constables into one basket and none in the other basket this is a valid possibility so that means it is possible that some of the beans are left empty the problem as such doesn't stop us doesn't restrict us from doing it. so so we are fine but this is something to note that in this particular way of dividing it the, uh, the beans can remain empty Now, one more problem. At this time, let's talk about giving gifts to constable. So we have say n constable in your police station, and there are hundred identical gifts. Think of shopping coupons. You have hundred shopping coupons, and you want to distribute the coupons among your constables. A constable can get any number of coupons and a constable may or may not get a coupon also. How many ways can you give a coupon? Now this is very similar to the technique here that we will apply is very similar to the one that we applied when we talked about choosing k percent from n from a group of size n where repetitions are allowed and ordering matters okay so let's quickly let's see the technique again so here we have 100 coupons right so let me say that there are these 100 gifts and let me just draw them as squares as these are the uh, coupons Now all of these coupons are identical, so it doesn't matter what I, how I place them. So we lay the coupons in a straight line and now we have to decide how to divide the coupons among the end constable. So one thing that we can do, or let's think what we would do naturally. So as soon as the first constable comes up, we will pick the okay let's see these three of them are yours the next constable comes he said okay these two of them now are yours so in some sense think of them that, that a constable comes arrives i just take the first three and give it to uh, the constable first constable then i'm left with things to, from here to here so the next constable comes, I again say, okay, everything here bit are yours. The next constable comes and says, okay, everything, these three of them are yours. The fourth constable comes, says, okay, I don't like it, I don't like you, I don't give you any any coupon. So I will say, okay, so here is your bar. Right? So what am I doing? So in other words, I am basically placing some kind of bars between these coupons so there are 100 coupons there are 100 coupons and i am placing some kind of bars within between these coupons and how many bars should i put now if i put three bars or four bars 
I say that everything left of it is goes to conservable 1. Everything between these two bars goes to conservable 2. Everything between this one goes to conservable 3. Everything between this two goes to conservable 4. And everything right of this goes to conservable 5. It's like walls we have created, right? So four walls basically is a way of dividing the coupons into five constables. Similarly, if I have n constables, I can use n minus one walls like this. And I can place this wall anywhere I want. Right? So any placement of so any placement of the squares and wall, uh, bars give me a partition of this n identical gifts into the n uh, sorry partition of the hundred identical gifts into n constable. For example, if say I suddenly so I look at a part uh, an all, ODR at already, so say so this is a some ordering of the squares and bars and what does this say? This says that constable 1 gets 2 coupons, constable 2 gets, of course there is nothing here, 0 coupons, constable 3 gets 0 coupons, constable 4 gets 2 coupons, constable 5 gets 4 coupons, Constable 6 gets 3 coupons and Constable 7 gets 0 coupons. So this is a way of distributing these 11 coupons into 7, cons mm, seven constables. So in other words what we are talking about is that Every distribution of this n, uh, this hundred identical objects into n constables can be represented as an ordering of hundred, hundred squares and n minus one bars. Right, n minus one balls, and any ordering of this hundred squares and n minus one walls gives me a di distribution of hundred coupons to n constables. So the answer to this question of how many ways can we distribute hundred coupons to n constable is basically the number of ways we can order 100 squares and n minus 1 bars. And how many ways can that be done? So how many objects are there? 100 squares and n minus 1 bars? It is n plus 100 minus 1, right? So this many objects are there. So I, I order this many objects in how many ways can I do it? I can do it in this many number of ways, factorial number of ways. But again, since the, all the coupons are all identical, so we have to factor them out. We should not consider the fact the permutation between them. So we should factor out that by dividing by n factorial. Sorry, by dividing by 100 factorial and we should also factor out the fact that all the walls are identical. They are just, the walls are nothing written on them especially. So we should factor that out also and we get n minus 1 factorial. So that is the answer to this question, right?
It is very similar to the technique that we did last time in the last video for selecting k people from n from a group of size n by repetitions are allowed and ordering matters. So, in general, what we are talking about here, if you have n indistinguishable balls and k labeled beans, now they are labeled beans because once we are doing this kind of parts, I have labels, like this goes to bin number 1, this goes to bin number 2. So here I am already talking about some kind of a natural labeling that is coming up because of the placement of the bars. So if we have n indistinguishable balls like the coupons and k labeled beans like the k constables, then how many ways can you place the n balls in k beans where ordering inside the k beans does not matter it is what we just wrote which is n plus 1 n plus k minus 1 factorial divided by n factorial to take care of the fact that the balls are all indistinguishable and k minus 1 factorial to take care of the bars or the walls are indistinguishable which actually in terms of notation is same as n plus k minus 1, choose k minus 1. Okay. Note here that since two walls can be next to each other, so there can be a possibility that a bin remains completely empty. Now what happens if we add the constraint that every constable must get at least one coupon. Now there are two ways of doing this whole thing. Okay, two ways of calculating it. Number one thing is that you can first give all the n constables one coupon each. Right? So in that case I will be left with 100 minus n coupons. And now divide this n coupons in whatever way we want in among the n minus 1 constables, which is by the earlier rule this factorial by n minus 1 factorial times 100 minus n factorial, or which does come down to. Hundred minus one factorial by n minus one factorial and hundred minus n factorial, which is equals to hundred minus n choose n minus one. Right? So this is idea is that just give one coupon to all the constables to start with. So everybody now has at least one coupon. Now whatever is rest, divide among the constables in whatever way you want and which is this many number of ways. Now there is one other way of solving the same or reaching the same answer. It is like these bars and uh, like the uh, walls and coupons problem. Again we lay out the coupons in a straight line and again we have to basically put up n minus 1 horizontal bars, uh, sorry, vertical bars, but where do we put them up? We, since we cannot put two of the, horizon, uh, the vertical bars next to each other, so that means between any gap between these two consecutive coupons, there can be at most one horizontal bar, right? So this n minus 1 horizontal bar should be placed among this set of all the possible possibility possibility positions. How many positions are there? How many gaps are there between two consecutive coupons? Since there are 100 coupons, the number of positions between the coupons is 
100 minus 1. I can choose any one, any n minus 1 of them and place the bars there and I get a permit. I get a distribution of the coupons into n constables so that every constable gets at least one coupon. So the number we get again is same 100 minus 1 choose n minus 1. Right? So this of course we can generalize again to that if we have n indistinguishable balls and k labeled beans, how many ways can we place the n ball in k beans when ordering in the beans does not matter but no beans can remain empty? It is so arrange the balls in a straight line. There are n minus 1 gaps between them. How many ways can you place the k minus 1 walls between uh, among this n minus 1 spaces, which is n minus 1 choose k minus 1. Okay. So till now we were not looking at the ordering in the pins at all. What happens if we look at the ordering inside the pins? For example, say in the constable problem, we want to divide this n constable into four projects, project one, project two, project three, project four. No constable can be part of more than one project. Every constable should be part of some project. But you also have to decide the ranking of the constable in each of the project. So note that I can do the same trick that I did, which is now I can place the constables in a particular ordering. So I have I have constable one, constable two till constable n take any ordering of the constables and if I can partition and if I can draw this since there are four projects if I can draw three bars among them and I say that okay this set of constables is in project one these of them are in project two these are in project three and these are in project four then we get uh, one way of partitioning it and any permutation of C1 to Cn will give me a different way of partitioning them into these four projects and clearly for example C1, C2 and this thing is same as, is sorry different as C2, C1 and this thing. So a different permutation gives me a different, although the groups might be same, the different ordering A different ordering of or different ranking of constables in each of the projects right so we can do the same idea about like the balls and uh, bars issue and I get how what do I get okay number of ways I can place this uh, so I have the n constables and I have 3 bars so I have n plus 3 objects I factorize them I, these are the number of ways I can just order them and I just have to just take care of the fact that the 3 bars are identical the 3 bars are just 3 objects I should not differentiate between them but I don't need to differentiate divide by n factorial because the every different ordering of the constable gives me a different uh, way of putting the constables in different objects and different ranking. So general generalizing this we have if we have n distinguishable balls and k labeled beans then the number of ways we can place n balls in k beans when ordering inside the beans matter 
is just n plus k minus 1 factorial divided by k minus 1 factorial. Okay, so we have seen quite different versions of them, different versions of distributing k n balls into k bins. So till now what we have seen is that if the items are indistinguishable and bins are labeled, we know how to solve it, which is n plus k minus 1 to k minus 1, when they can be empty. And when bins are labeled and they cannot be empty, then I have n minus 1 to k minus 1. When the items are distinguishable and ordering inside the bins doesn't matter, in that case, when the bins are empty, can be empty, then the total number is k power n, whereas otherwise we just now saw it is n plus k minus 1 factorial by k minus 1 factorial. As you can see in this diagram, at least two of the boxes are left empty. Namely, what happens when the items are in this items are distinguishable? And ordering inside the bins does not matter, but the bins cannot be empty. And similarly, the ordering inside the bins matters, but the bins cannot be empty. There are three more things that also, which are the fact that what happens if the bins are unlabeled? Which what happens when the I am not at all interested in the labeling of the bins but I just want to know how many groups in which you can form it. So we have left with five options, five places to solve and we will continue with our understanding of trying to solve this particular matrix in the next class. Thank you.